There we go. Okay. So welcome and good morning. Um, so we'll just have a block and we'll have a belter strap today as well. Right. Oh. And so making your way to your mat, we're going to start sitting in Supasana with the crossed legs. Using those arms alongside, lengthening up, feeling space coming between the vertebrae, space in the hip sockets. Whatever little shifting and squinging you want to do. And finishing with that, we'll bring the hands onto the knees. Inhale and exhale. Settling into your body, into your breath. And letting go of the rest of the day. Just being here now in your body with your breath. Maybe observing and noticing something that's going on in your body or in your mind, but you don't need to go looking for something. You just sort of be there in the background without paying attention to it, especially. Just acknowledging yourself as you are. And then we'll reach out wide through the collarbones, through the fingertips. Inhale and exhale, breathing those arms up, taking up lots of space. Inhale and exhale, breathing them down. Let's do that twice more. Nice big round breaths, feeling into your body. And then coming forward and over. Ah, breathing more into the back of the body now. Expanding the ribs to the side and the back. Reaching back and down through the sitting bones, even as you reach forward through the top of the head. And then let's walk the hands over to the right diagonal. So I'm being the mirror at the moment. Walking the hands over to the right, long reach along the left side with that left sitting bone pulling down and back. And then left hand on the right knee, twisting open, reaching back with the right arm on the back diagonal, pressing the whole back of that right arm away. And 
And then reaching that right arm over the ear and kind of a twist and side bend. And then slowly swoop the arm all the way back and around and to the center. A <sighs> couple deep breaths here in the center. And then coming up, unfurling that spine back up on top of the sitting bones, everything settles into place. Inhale and exhale. And then changing the cross of the legs. And we'll do that diagonal around to the left, coming forward and over, taking a few breaths here. And then walking the hands over to the left diagonal, long reach on the right side, pulling that right sitting bone down and back. And then right hand on the left knee, twisting open, turning inside out. And reaching that left arm over the ear and kind of a twist inside again. And then a big swoop around with that left arm stretching through the shoulder to come back to the center forward. And coming up on Furling the spine back up on top of the sitting bones, everything settles into place. And inhale and exhale. Somewhere a little different than where we were 10 minutes ago. And then let's come up and downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, walking the dog or anything you want to do, taking your time getting there as needed. So um, I've been liking to do ah, this extended child's pose or playful puppy sort of pose first sometimes. Ah. And then once you're in that downward facing dog, walking the dog or anything else you want to do.
And then we'll find the best downward facing dog of this moment. And inhaling up to those sitting bones, exhale, pouring down the backs of the legs. And let's take a little slide forward and up. So don't go far. Just like you were trying to look forward and see what was going on at the front of the room, trying to arch up into the back. So we still have a big hinge in the hips, we're not in the plank. And then slowly with a little resistance from that upper chest, pressing back, let the head drop down. Let's do that twice more, not quite so lingering. Inhale and exhale, sliding forward and up. Inhale and exhale, sliding up and back, and once more. And then coming down, sitting back and down with facing dog. Not down, but sorry, <laughs> sitting back in child's pose. There we go. And then coming forward onto your stomach into the sphinx, elbows under the shoulders, reaching all the way out through the fingertips, pulling that center line forward, sides back. Maybe there's a little lift of the elbows, pulling back a little more with the, hand, with the hands. So don't force that. And then coming down, forehead on the hands. And we'll pull the hands back into the cobra position, pulling the elbows a little up and back, setting the hands down. And then we'll do the small cobra three times, pulling back with the elbows, lengthening forward to the upper chest, lengthening up, and then still doing that reach back and forward as we come down. So we get a little longer going up and a little longer going down, and twice more. And then let's come up in that small cobra, lifting our right leg. And lengthening down and lifting the left leg. And coming down. Bring the arms forward to the sphinx once again. Really tucking the tailbone down into the floor, reach to the toes, and we'll bend the knees. Squeezing the upper back and the heels toward each other. Also, a lift through the top of the head and the toes toward the ceiling while we press that pelvis into the floor. And then extending the legs back out, pull a little more with the hands, maybe the elbows will lift. And come down, deep breath. And then we will peel ourselves up, taking a few cats and cows and making our way back to downward facing dog. And breathing here, or maybe going through the vinyasa smoothly if you want. Any version of the vinyasa, if you're going to do that.
And then one more breath here in our downward facing dog. And we'll look between the hands to jump or step forward. Into the concave back, halfway up. Holding over. Oh, taking a couple breaths here in the forward bend. And coming up to standing, big front body long. And pressing the arms down long through the top of the head. And I circle the shoulders to interlock the fingers behind. Taking a few moments here, letting the backs of those hands drop down, drawing the upper arms back. And then continuing in our usual way to lift the chest, to lift the chin. Of course, that's today doing it. So there's something a little different. And then coming forward and over. Release the hands. Concave back halfway up. Holding over and jumping or stepping back through the vinyasa or not, and we'll all be back in downward facing dog. And let's lift our right leg up. And then we'll do the slide with that right leg lifted. So pulling a little bit forward, lifting even more with the right leg, and then pressing back, pulling with the right leg to pull you up and back a little more through to the lunge. And we'll bring that left knee down and jayasana, the kneeling lunge. Inhaling up the front, exhale, pouring down the back. And let the eagle pose arms here, bringing the arms around, crossing the right arm under, or holding the shoulders, either one. Breathing into the center of the upper back. And releasing the arms, we'll turn to the wide leg forward bend. Prasarita Padottanasana. Feet parallel, legs straight, as straight as they're willing to be here. And then actively engaging with this drawing up through the inner thighs, a little widening out, pouring down that outer leg into the outer foot, into the floor. And then turning to the left lunge at the back of the mat. And we'll do um, more or less what we did facing the front. So not to worry if you can't see. Coming up and then Jayasana on the left. And the only difference is instead of eagle pose, we'll circle those arms all the way around and back up over. And namaste in front. And wet back to that wide leg forward bend. Uh, 
And then elephant rider. Turn the heels in, the toes out, bending the knees, arms up on those inner thighs and inner knees, pressing back. Little scoop forward with the tailbone, or maybe not, maybe swinging that tailbone up and back. That makes a little different stretch, feeling into your hip joints and what's going on here. And then we'll straighten the legs into the three pointed star, rotating those thigh bones into the hip sockets as we bring the arms up, lifting up. And pressing the arms down to parallel, turning the feet to parallel. So remember, I'm not the mirror at this point, I'm doing my real right and left. As we rotate our right leg out 90 degrees toward our front of the mat into the warrior two, leading with the inner thigh to the inner knee to the center of the foot. Every breath and action through the body. And dancing warrior, bringing that right arm up in the way. If you want, taking the left arm to the half binding, giving that left shoulder a roll down, pulling the elbow down. And then we'll hinge into the triangle, reaching out with that right arm, left arm reaches up the back. And it only literally goes to the ceiling if your torso is parallel to the floor. If you're a little diagonal up, that left arm is going to be a little diagonal back. All right, and here we are in our triangle. And something like that up the inner leg and down the outer, except we're going to go down the left outer leg as we draw up from the right arch of the foot, spiraling around across the knee joint into the sitting bone and hip joint. And then the pouring down goes off the back or uh, the outer edge of the left leg. A little bit more complicated energetically. And then let's come down to the lunge. Stepping back through the vinyasa, any version, and downward facing dog. Then we'll go around on the left. Let's lift the left leg up. And then taking the slide forward and a little bit up. And as you go back, pressing at the back of the right leg, pulling with the left leg, sliding up and back. And through to the lunge. Bringing the right knee down and Jayasana kneeling lunge. On the left leg toward the front of the mat. And let's bring those arms around into the eagle pose, left arm under, or maybe holding the shoulders. And releasing the arms. Wide leg forward, then drawing up the inner thighs, pouring down the outer energetic loop up 
on the inhale, down on the exhale through those legs. And then turning to the right lunge at the back of the mat and bringing the left knee down and jai us. And circling those arms all the way around and back up overhead. And namaste in front. And back to Prasarita Padotanasana, wide apart feet pose. And then rotating out. So we see the feet turn, that's the most obvious thing. But we're also turning the thigh bone in the hip joint. Feeling like the inner thigh goes up across the top of the thigh and pours down the back of the outer. So that instead of our knees and the, the quadriceps on our thighs facing forward, we're rotating them out to the diagonal side. And then We'll squingy into your hip joints with everything like here. And then coming up in the three pointed star, rotating those legs in even more, or rotating them out even more into the hip joint. And pressing the arms down parallel to the floor, turning those feet to parallel. Rotating the left leg out 90 degrees and into the warrior two, inner thigh to the inner knee, over the foot. Ah, oh, breathing here, every breath renewing your presence. Every breath is like we're just coming into the pose. And dancing warrior, bringing that left arm up and away in a side bend, maybe the half binding with the right, pulling the shoulder down, pulling the elbow down. And into the triangle, reaching out with the left side, hinging over, pouring out the front of the right shoulder, out the right fingertips. Breathing yourself in. That left hand goes where it goes, not where you wish it would go, but maybe in a few breaths, it's where you want it to be. Breathing here, radiating out. And then we're spiraling up the left leg with every moment pulling up from the arching foot around the shin to the outer left knee into the left sitting bone and then Pouring down the outside of that right leg into the outer heel. And lunging down, stepping back to the plank through the vinyasa, holding the plank is a good version of the vinyasa. And then we'll all be in downward facing dog.
Taking three deep breaths here and downward facing dog. Coming down, sitting back in child's pose. And come forward into the Sphinx, pulling back with the elbows, pulling back with the hands. And coming down, and then we'll do the giant bug cobra, taking the hands out across from the shoulders on the pads of the fingers, or you can always flatten the hands down if that pads of the fingers gets a little challenging. The other thing here is try not to push too much with those hands, putting more work in the center. As we take a little drop of the chin to roll up, and pulling those elbows wide, calming down. Let's do that twice more. And then we'll come up once more in our giant bug. Try not to straighten the arms, even if you can't. Give a little pull out with the elbows. And then we'll twist, twisting to the right, dipping the left shoulder down, maybe going all the way down to the floor, left ear to the floor, and lifting back up. Twisting the shoulders to the left, right shoulder goes down, any amount, maybe all the way down to right ear on the floor, and lengthening up. So we'll do that back and forth three more times, or whatever number you're doing. So this twisting can be very small, up in just the shoulders. Then the shame with this in the next few breaths. And then calming down. Oh, deep breath. Back into the space. Reaching long through the legs, bending the knees, reaching the upper back and heels toward each other, long through the top of the head and the toes to the ceiling, pelvis to the floor. And then option number one, staying here, or getting hold of the ankles and coming up into the bow pose, or any other options you could think of. And breathing here. And coming down. Oh. And then we will peel ourselves back up to downward facing dog. We throw a little indulgent cobra in, a couple cats and cows. And then downward facing dog. And walking the hands back to your feet at the back of the mat into Uttanasana, the forward bend. Oh, breathing here.
Coming up to standing, big front body. Pressing the arms down along to the top of the hands. So we're going to do the interlock fingers with the twist of the shoulders there. Um, it's a little bit more stable when your feet are a little wider apart. If you want to move them a little, or either hip distance or maybe even a little wider, as we interlock, <clears throat> interlock the fingers behind. Lengthening up the front of the body to lift the chest, to lift the chin, and coming over. And then we'll twist the shoulders to the right, bending the left leg, left shoulder reaching for the left knee. Coming back to the center and then twisting the shoulders left, pulling the hands right, right knee bends, right shoulder reaching for the right knee. Coming back to the center, releasing the hands. Concave back. That's essentially that slide action we did. And folding over. And then walking the hands out to downward facing dog. And doing, um, going through the vinyasa for knots. Or just breathing there in your downward facing dog. Oh, all right, let's lift our right leg up. And then doing that slide, just a little shift forward, like you're trying to see what's going on out in front of you. And then sliding up and back and through to the lunge. This time we'll come up in the warrior number one, or it could be the high lunge. And then eagle pose arms. So we're doing kind of the same pattern as before, but with a little difference. And releasing the arms, coming down, turning to the wide leg forward bend. Up the inner legs, down the outer. Turn into the left lunge at the back of the mat. Coming up in the warrior one for the high lunge. And then circling those arms all the way around with a big circle of breath. And namaste in the center and into the floor. Wide leg forward then. And into the elephant right, or rotating those feet and hip joints out, bending the knees, a little stretch there. And then coming up in the three pointed star, rotating those thigh bones into the hip joints. Arms to parallel, feet to parallel. And rotating the right leg out 90 degrees into the warrior number two.
And dancing warrior, bringing that right arm up and away, maybe half binding with the left or not. And this time you can go into the triangle again, or maybe up to Ardha Chandrasana, the half. I mean, shifting the weight forward and up. You feel that right leg spiraling, rotating into the hip joint. A little more engagement, maybe with the right gluteus maximum. And then turning to face the right leg into the standing split with your left leg lifted, whatever those words mean for your body at this time. And then we'll bend that right leg, taking the left leg behind and sitting down in that stand. Rasna, we're getting here by any means. And here we are. Oh, sitting on the floor, the left leg could be straight or it's bent under us, right leg going up and over, trying to stand on the right foot and extend up through the right knee as we twist to the right. Inhale and exhale. And coming back to the center, disentangling the legs, coming up onto your feet. Ah, and we'll make our way back to downward facing dog. Do the vinyasa or not. All right, and then around we go on the left. Lifting the left leg up. And sliding forward and up. And sliding up and down. And dog at the high fire hydrant. And through to the lunge. Warrior number one or high lunge on the left, facing the front of the mat. And arms around and into the eagle pose, left arm under. And releasing those arms, coming down. Vasarita Padotanasana, wide apart feet. Up those inner thighs, down the outer. Turning to the right lunge at the back of your mat, warrior one or the high lunge. And then we'll circle those arms all the way around and back up overhead.
And namaste in front. Namaste into the floor. And back to the wide leg forward bend. And elephant rider rotating those legs out. We'll stretch for a couple breaths. Three pointed star rotating the legs into the hip joints. And arms to parallel, feet to parallel. Rotating the left leg out 90 degrees, warrior number two. Dancing warrior, bringing that left arm up in a way, maybe the half binding. And then assorted options. The triangle again, or maybe up to Arga Chandrasana, or some combination of both poses. We do one for a bit and then the other. And then can you feel that left leg outer rotating, drawing up through the arch of the left foot, spiraling around to the left sitting bone, engaging that left gluteus maximus with a little more strength and intention. And then we'll turn to face our left leg, lifting the right leg up in the standing split, whatever that is. Maybe it's a standing forward bend, maybe it's more like warrior three. And bending the left leg, that's the and the right leg under. Ah. And inhale and exhale, getting yourself situated here. Try not to let everything collapse into the floor as we twist to the left. Inhale and exhale. Back to the center. Let's disentangle those legs. So, well, we'll manage to squeeze some of the belt in here. So, having that belt nearby, and just a brief forward bend here with our two straight legs, like as if we came up to standing in a standing forward bend. Feet are reaching toward the opposite wall, top of the head reaching toward the opposite wall, like there's a gravitational pull there. And then rolling yourself vertebrae by vertebrae down to the floor. Standing long and flat against the floor. 
And let's bend the right leg in. Taking a few moments, standing on the left leg, reaching through that left leg. And belt around the right foot, extending the right leg up. So we're here at the end of class. So maybe you want to be a little more easeful and, and indulgent in your stretchiness here. Or maybe still reaching with active intent through your left leg a little more. Whatever works for you. Maybe not even thinking about it, just breathing. And then built into the right hand, bringing that right leg out to the diagonal side. Again, you can reach a little more through the right leg, holding it more supported, resisting a little from the left side, or maybe you're just going to let that right leg rest on the floor. Um, back up to the center, and we'll pass the belt off to the left hand, right arm to the side. Or always take the belt off and bend that right leg with the inner foot on the inner left leg, or with the straight right leg. Inhale and exhale, melting into the And back to the center, bring the right leg down, standing on two legs for a moment, and then we'll bend our left leg in. Pulling that thigh in, reach along through the right heel. And then belt around the left foot, extending the left leg up. Breathing through both legs. And then built into the left hand, bringing that leg out to the diagonal side. However useful or not you want this to be, you might have noticed sometimes a little bit of effort feels more useful.
And coming back up to the center, passing that belt off to the right hand, bringing that left leg across to the right, either with the straight leg or maybe the back leg. And hailing the next hand. And then coming back to the center, sliding that left leg out to straight. Back to the hands on the floor, palms to the ceiling into Shavasana. So we'll go a minute or two over. If you need to leave, that's fine. All right. Meanwhile, inhale and exhale. Dropping inside yourself, feeling every moment of every breath expanding time. And then one more deep long breath all the way to the top of the inhale, all the way to the bottom of the exhale. And then moving the fingers and toes, maybe circling the wrists and ankles, stretching the arms up overhead. And knees. And making your way up to sitting as gently as you can. And sitting in any comfortable position with a long and spacious spine. Taking a few more moments, sitting quietly inside yourself. Namaste. Thank you for coming.